morning, First Love Church. How's it going? First Love family. Uh, Daily Devo's time here from the Mothership, First Love Church, 3185 Pullman Street, Costa Mesa, California. 9 o'clock and 10.30 on Sunday, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, men's Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, Celebrate Recovery Friday night at 7 o'clock. Plenty to do around here. So we're going to be looking at three parts of Scripture today. Uh, John chapter 1, um, Colossians chapter 1, and the book of Jude. So I, I think... I think it's important, again, to point to biblical illiteracy as being the culprit for most of the problems in the church, and that and gossip and self-centeredness and resentment and uh, all the things that will really result from biblical illiteracy, or, or maybe just a failure to understand. So in John chapter 1, it tells us, who Jesus is. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So it's identifying those two as being of the same essence, of being the same character, and in fact being the same God just in two separate persons. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. And so it reiterates the fact that not only was he with God, but he was God. And again, he is with God. So it goes on in verse 3 and he says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So that establishes him as not just co-creator, but at the same time sole creator. Which I know is hard to get your mind around, but it's what the Bible says. So believe it. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Oh, excuse me, I, I, I misread that. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This is interesting because, it, so, there's God, creator of the universe, in the Father and the Son, and he was the life and the light of men. And it's shown in the darkness. Jesus Christ shone his light in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So when you go over to Colossians chapter 1, it further reiterates who God was in Christ. And it goes like this. Verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Now, what we need to understand is that a lot of critics have used this to say, see, he was created. He wasn't eternal. He wasn't preeminent. He wasn't there forever. And that's not true because what it's saying when it says the firstborn of all creation, and from a cultural standpoint, the first century, when it says the firstborn over all creation, it means that that son has preeminence as an equal in spirit, in essence, and in all things. So, Firstborn over all creation just simply means he has the same authority as the Father. For by him, because it goes on and it it tells you, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So then you go on to Jude, and it says this, Give me a sec. Just give me one second here. And this is in verse 20. Just one chapter in this book. Power pack book, though. And it says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So I, I'm going to tie this together and explain to you how this relates to biblical illiteracy. Because it says in John chapter 1 that the light shone in the darkness, but the darkness did not understand it. Well, the darkness did not understand it because, I, I, I hate to say this, Because for a larger part, in the whole body of the church, they weren't listening. 
they weren't listening. Now, I'm not saying shame on you. You weren't listening to the preacher. You weren't listening to the Word of God. You weren't being moved by the worship to have your heart opened and prepared to receive the implanted Word. No, but our minds, our minds are constantly being afflicted and attacked by thoughts from the outside. And that's a purposeful ploy of the devil to get us to be biblically illiterate. He doesn't want us to understand. That's why, that's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved of the workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when Jude says, you know, keep yourself in the love of God. I'm going I'm to get back to that and read it again because it's so important that we understand this. Jude 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, I haven't, but I bet if I did do a a, a linguistic study of, of the words of this verse, keeping yourselves in the love of God, keep building yourself up on your most holy faith, I'm almost certain, in fact, I'm going to check this out and I'll get back to you, but I'm almost certain it would talk about the importance of the Word of God in relation to your understanding. The Word of God in relation to the Spirit of God in relation to your comprehension. So when you go back to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So there, there it's establishing the significance of how long God has been around, where the word emanates from, who the word actually is, being Jesus, the fact that he's been preeminent, he was in the beginning with God. It tells you what he's done. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. It's saying to you, pay attention Pay attention. Set the things of your mind that might distract you from the Word of God apart from you. Set them away. Well, we learned in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your paths. There's a sacrificial surrender that needs to take place. That when the Word is spoken, when we open our Bibles... We have to, as Jude said, keep ourselves in the love of God, praying in the Holy Spirit. We have got to be proactively co- proactive and co- in co-action with God. There's just, no, there's just no other way. And for us to get the full milk of the Word, for us to, and, and the Bible tells us to just crave that, crave that, crave that milk of the Word like a newborn babe. And the only way that we're going to get everything that God has for us out of the Word is by starving for that Word and by seeking that Word above and beyond all things. I, I, you know, sometimes I'll be sitting in, in church, maybe on Pastor Ben is teaching, and something will pop into my mind. A tantalizing little fish hook with a tasty little worm on it. that's outside the steps, down the steps, out in the parking lot, somewhere else. And I'll, I'll let myself go down that rabbit trail. Family, we've got to learn discipline. We've got to learn to study to so, uh, show yourself approved. A workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That, what that's talking about is, man, when it says study. Okay, so have you ever had a test for something that was really important to you? Something that you really wanted to accomplish. And man, you poured yourself into studying for that test and you passed it with flying colors because of the application that you, that you provided. You worked. It was important above all things. Man, that's how we got to treat the Word of God, you guys. That's how you got to treat the Word of God. We don't understand the Word because we're in the darkness. And we haven't really let the light in fully committed to the teaching of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. You are so good. We love you so much, Lord. 
And Lord, I just pray that you would just, for everyone here today, that you would cover them and bless them and guide them and guard them and sharpen our spirit to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys deeply. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.